Thank you for the kind introduction and to Louis van Rijn and your team, thank you for the privilege to be here. I keep being introduced as former public protector and <laughs> and celebrated for what the public protector team did uh, more than more than two years ago. I, I don't know, in leadership they say that if you can only celebrate what you did yesterday, then you haven't lived today. No, no, that's a challenge, say. It, it, it's, it's not your fault. What it says to my team, my current team and I, which is Mana sitting there and other members of the M plan for social justice and members of the Tuma Foundation, we have a challenge ahead of us. We would like to be known for what we're doing right now, as opposed to what I did yesterday. But having said that, thank you again for the privilege. We're here to celebrate a thousand uh, businesses or business partnerships that uh, the PFP has organized across South Africa in the last few years. The story of Partners for Possibilities is a story of leadership for change anchored in the power of dreams, hope and tenacity. It is also a story of faith. It is a quintessential story of leadership development and collaboration. I've been in a group where we had a principal and a CEO, Darian and Dion. For me, this was the second time I experienced these stories. To say that was uplifting is an understatement. Did you have the same experiences in your group? The power of possibility thinking, isn't it? They say that moaning the darkness does not change the situation. It's lighting a candle that does. Thinking back to the early days when Louis van Rijn started with this project, I am reminded that, that it was a difficult task. There were days when, when we were DMing each other. I don't even think it, there, was D, there was DM. I think we were still sending each other emails when she was talking about how difficult it was and how painful some of those days were. And I think what must have kept her going is faith. Faith that tomorrow was going to be better than today. Faith that the dream she had was a dream she had the ability to fulfill. But faith in humanity, in you guys, in all of us, that if she dreams it and builds it, the rest of us were going to come. And yeah, finally, everyone came. The Ethiopians say, little by little, an egg will walk. And here we are, 1,000 schools later, 1,000 partnerships later, we're celebrating this initiative. Kathy Mutlutana, who is part of uh, this new TV um, uh, news, Newsroom Africa, tweeted recently that breaking ground is just the start. The story we just listened to now was a story about a group that broke ground just a year ago. Uh, the story of Darian and Dion just broke ground a year ago. And a year later, 
we're hearing stories of hope restored, dreams encouraged, and children getting the rooting and wings that every child should get. I think it's the Chinese that say, you have to give your children just two things only, roots to be grounded and wings to fly. Sadly, poverty, inequality, historical and new, deprives many children of the roots and the wings that every child needs. We talk about a free market economy, but how free is that free market when others don't even reach the starting line? Because poverty and inequality traps them in the margins of society. But we can all complain about poverty and inequality. We can all complain about the fact that the dream in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights is being denied to some of humanity. That whole idea that everyone is born equal and is entitled to all rights and freedoms. The dream in our Constitution about the freed potential of every person and improve quality of life of every person. We can sit and moan, but would that change anything? Hasn't changed much, isn't it, in the last 25 years? We are officially, according to Time magazine and many others, including the de Klerk Foundation, the most unequal society in the world. Poverty at 55% across the nation, among those classified by law as African, 64.2% poverty. Unemployment at 27%. Poor access to health facilities, poor health choices, children born with stunted brains because of undernourishment of parents developing with stunted development because of lack of access to nutrition. We can complain about all of that, or we can level the playing field. And the story of PFP is the story, it is the original Tumamina. It is the story of saying, if something needs to be fixed, and I have the ability to fix it, I will fix it. And then the things that I can't fix, I'll find somebody else to fix them. Because if you look at the model, it's about them seeing a gap between the constitutional promise and the universal declaration promise and people's lived realities. And then saying, okay, we can't fix it ourselves. We have the vision of what it would take to fix it. Let's find someone who can fix it. And then they bring in facilitators, they bring in CEOs. Oh, you've run a successful company. How about sharing what you know with others? But what I do like with the approach as well is that it is an approach that is based on equality. Much as people with successful companies are bring being brought to schools that are not successful, there's an understanding that everybody knows something. And that I may know a whole lot of things, but a grandmother from Tofim Vaba in the Eastern Cape knows a whole lot of things that I need to learn. My domestic worker knows a whole lot of things that I need to learn. Children, the millennials, teach us a whole lot of things that we need to learn. And that's what I like about the model. The approach of the Tumamina is something we share. We have an organization called Tuma Foundation, and we believe that the world we want to live in lies in our collective 
and individual hands. That if each one of us rolls up our sleeves and fix the problems we can fix, then hold accountable those who need to come to the party, we can fix these problems. We can end poverty by 2030. We can reduce structural inequality by 2030, which is what is expected of us in terms of the sustainable development goals. What also we learn from the Partners for Possibilities approach is that leadership is at the center of all developments in organizations and society. I note that the leadership approach targets the principal, but listening to the stories from the principals and the CEOs or the executives, it's very clear that the leadership approach is the leadership that plants seeds of leadership in everyone. That the students themselves are taught to understand that they are the leaders they need in their lives. They are taught they can dream, and they can pursue their dreams. Because leadership, truly speaking, is about influencing and inspiring yourself and others to think in a particular way and act in a particular way. And this project is about getting principals and the entire school governance system, plus the children involved, to think in a particular way and act in a particular way. But to act in a way that is consistent with their own sustainable development, the sustainable development of their own communities and the country they want to be part of. It is also a story of collaboration. As you've seen, the collaboration between the principals and the executives but also collaboration between PFP and all of the professionals that are brought to the party to help. Ethiopians again say, when spider webs combine, they can tie up a lion. And that's what Ethiopians say. But if you look at Rwanda, South Africa, from Rwanda down to South Africa, we talk about Ubuntu, and Rwandans talk about Ubuntu, Basutu talk about Ubuntu. At the core Ubuntu of Ubuntu is understanding the interconnectedness of humanity. I am because you are. Together, we are better against the elements. And coming to think of it, every epic achievement known to humanity is the product of a village, isn't it? It really takes a village to, to achieve those epic things that are attributed to one person. The story of the pub protector is the story of a nation on a quest for good governance, anti-corruption, and a democracy that works for all. We talk about the Bob Protector having done those things, but think about it, if the media didn't break the story, would there have been a public protector investigation? If the media didn't start publishing more stories and, 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 and giving us a sense of where the truth was hiding and what the truth could possibly be, what if there was no legal profession that helped when the powers of the Bob Protector were challenged? What if the judiciary refused to play its role as the ultimate guardians of democracy? What about opposition parties? What if they didn't think this was their job? And inside the governing party itself, what if it was just a brick wall? There were no cracks. There weren't any people that were working inside the system for a democracy that works for all, that is one based on integrity, the truth, and social justice. So ultimately, what we attribute to the Pub Protector of South Africa is the story of a village of people in South Africa and all over the world that sought to defend democracy. It reminds us of the story of the village that delivered democracy, the democracy we are, celebrating 25 years later. It was, again, people from all walks of life 
including people from the international community. So our story with the PFP or with Partners for Possibility as the Tuma Foundation and, and as the M Plan for Social Justice is, um, is a combination of two issues. Well, firstly, I've known and admired uh, uh, Partners for Possibilities, uh, particularly the, 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 the founder for years, but currently, what brings us together are two things. One is an African proverb that says, in Lela Ibu Zogwaba Pambil. And that you ask for directions from those who have gone before you. So we're currently engaged in two projects that seek to achieve an accelerated pace in ending poverty and inequality by 2030, and also um, making sure that sustainable development is driven from bottom up. There's 4,392 municipalities, and would like to see all of those understand sustainable development goals, national development goals, and translate those into community goals and personal goals. We'd like uh, our unemployed graduates to understand sustainable development goals and translate those into group development goals and personal development goals because we think that's an opportunity to change the course of history when it comes to poverty, inequality, and a sustainable environment in this country. So in, in Lela Ibuzo Gaba Pambili, we're asking for directions from PFP and we, we bring them to the party. Another project related to that, to um, the M Plan for Social Justice, is a project that is called Enterprising Communities. So getting these communities to drive their own development, understand SDGs, and then once they understand SDGs, we bring in social investment, uh, social impact investment partners like Dragon's Den. I don't know if any of you knows Dragon's Den. Dragons then to come and partner with people as a group and as individuals in their enterprising journeys. They could be enterprising for development in the whole community. They could be enterprising as individuals running hot dog stands and, and whatever it is that they may be doing. And we think that PFP is a good partner. We've already brought PFP to the team at a place that involves 26 villages in Guazulu Natal. It's a place called Emenzi Meleni. We're piloting with enterprising communities, which is helping the community understand SDGs and national development goals, dream its own dream, Emenzi Meleni 2030, and then walk the journey in trying to achieve that dream. And when we asked Louise Van Rijn a year ago, she said yes. And in no time, her team was, was there. And they've already started with the school system. Because my mother said, education is a great leveler of opportunity. And, and she was right. I wouldn't be standing in front of you as the daughter of a domestic worker and a farm worker turned laborer and turned uh, um, self-employed small trader if it wasn't for education. But I also wouldn't be standing here if it wasn't for the kindness of strangers, which is why it's important for many of us who have power and privilege to step out of our comfort zone and lift those that have been left behind. So our story with PFP is also a story of if you wanna go fast, go alone. And if you wanna go far, go together. Dear colleagues, just in ending, I would like firstly to honor um, uh, Louise Van Rijn for her vision, for
for choosing to light a candle against darkness. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I also would like to honor her for helping us to believe that it's really possible to change things without simply complaining. It doesn't mean you don't hold people accountable. It just means you fix what you can and then you hold others accountable. But you might even bring them to the party by capacitating them. Because like PFP, we have discovered as the Tumor Foundation and, and M Plan that a lot of the mistakes that are happening in the governance system are not due to corruption. They're due to capacity. That if we solve capacity challenges, we could solve more than 50% of the problem. And then we then deal with integrity issues. But also if we deal with leadership, everything starts shifting. Right. What does the future hold? We're dealing with a thousandth school under PFP. Well, it's a, a, a thousandth partnership. My call to everyone else who is not yet part of the program yet is let's all join that program, those who can, those who have skills to transfer, those who have resources to transfer to the PFP. Let's join it because the UN has this slogan that says, leave no one behind. But to leave no one behind, we've got to find them where they are and walk with them the journey. And there's 4,392 wards, municipal wards in the country. Imagine if in all of those municipal wards, there was a Partners for Possibilities program. In two days, we're going to elections. Yes, we have to vote to make sure that whatever we call a new dawn translate into a good day. Because dawn is just the beginning. What you do after dawn determines what kind of day we're going to have. So what my request to all of us is Let's vote wisely on Wednesday. But after Wednesday, it doesn't matter who gets to govern. Democracy is about people's power. We are all in this boat. If the boat has cracks, those on the side of the crack will sink faster. But sink, we're all going down. And it's an indictment not on the ANC that 25 years into democracy, we are the most unequal society in the world, despite a constitution that promises to free the potential of every person. Despite a constitution that promises an improved quality of life of every person. So we vote on Wednesday, but thereafter we all join hands to make sure that the problems we can fix, we fix. The things that we must hold someone accountable for, we hold them accountable. But more importantly, we connect our lights. Because as long as there's injustice somewhere, there can't be sustainable peace anywhere. We have inherited democracy because people joined hands like spider webs. It's our turn to come together like spider webs, to make sure that every child gets the education they deserve. One that frees their potential and helps them improve the, the quality of their lives, the quality of the lives of their families, 
and the quality of society as a whole. If we do so, we can, 25 years from now, truly claim that when it was our turn to make democracy work for all, we answered the call positively. Thank you.